Welcome to this uh, lecture session recorded from home during the time of uh, coronavirus outbreak. The topic of this session is ECS, Entity Component System, a completely new programming paradigm introduced to Unity from the version 2018.2. This is uh, basically replacing uh, the traditional processing and computing model based on game objects and mono behavior class with something that is significantly more efficient. ECS is about separation of entities, data components and behavior or logic represented by systems. You might think that uh, Entity is something a bit like uh, old style game objects in Unity, but uh, nothing could be more wrong than that. The focus in the ECS architecture is entirely on the data components, and to be more precise, on the data streams composed of these uh, data components. In this diagram here, you can see a number of data components that form two input and one output streams of data. Uh, the input is consumed and the output is produced by uh, the system. Uh, the system that represents the behavior or logic of the game. But the important point is that this system is independent or it works externally from any entities. You have a number of entities here, a number of data components and one system that just takes the stream or several streams of input data, do some basic calculation. In this case, this system combines translation and rotation to produce the combined local to world transformation and uh, this uh, transformation produces the output stream sent to another component data. Component data are just pure data. There's no logic, no code in these components here, just data, variables, float numbers, vectors, matrices maybe, but it's just data. System does all the processing, okay? So it's a... Uh, you might say it's not object-oriented uh, processing because the process obtains or uh, gets a collection of data components coming from a number of entities and uh, does all the processing in a for each iteration. And uh, then we have the final question, what are the entities then? Entities are just like labels, or IDs, something that groups a number of components together to tell that these components, for example, these four components here, describe a single, well, entity. Now, this entity cannot be uh, thought like a that it is something like a game object if it has no internal logic, if all logic for the entity is external represented by this system. Uh, moreover, with the single entities, you can have many systems working on collections of data components coming from a number of entities. Each entity can differ in uh, the range or combination of specific, um, specific uh, data components. And such a combination, such a combination of, of a unique combination of components is called the archetype. So you can uh, notice that uh, in our diagram, we have two different archetypes. One archetypes con contain four components, translation, rotation, local to world, and the renderer. 
and the second archetype is similar but it does not con contain renderer. For a system which we saw in the previous slide, both these of these archetypes are good because this system only produced translation, rotation, sorry, it consumed translation, rotation and produced local to world. Uh, we can imagine another system perhaps which takes data stored in the renderer components and uh, the renderer components contains data like a uh, mesh and a textual material, okay, so a mesh and material, and there may be another system that uses these data just to, why not, render an object or render a visual representation of an entity. So, so far we know that uh, one important part of the system are data components. These data components are organized into entities. Then uh, uh, let's call it families of entities with the same um, combination of components are called archetypes. And then we have this thing that is called a system, which will just do some kind of processing one by one by one by one for each component in each entity that fits to some kind of uh, pattern. And there is one more important thing, uh, the archetype of an entity determines uh, where the components of this entity are stored. So uh, the, everything in a single archetype is, uh, is stored in a continuous chunk of, of memory. If it gets full, then another chunk will be, will be created. Uh, but what's important, if you access a collection of entities uh, represented by a single archetype, uh, its memory, its uh, data components will be stored together. And this is a very significant uh, memory optimization that makes uh, operations on chunks of entities much, much, much faster. And this is one of the many things that makes uh, the ECS so fast. It's not just this thing, but one of the many things that makes the ECS so fast. Of course, the other thing is that uh, all the processing, ju ju just imagine that we have here a single iteration that just goes da -da 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 along a number of, of uh, entities and data components from these uh, entities, rather than uh, calling update function of one game object, update function of another object, another game uh, update function of yet another object. It's just faster, just faster, okay? So this is uh, the big idea behind the ECS system in making games more efficient, in making games faster. There is not too much programming for the EC part of the ECS. You need to create your entities and this process is relatively straightforward. And you need to create your data components. Um, but these are extremely simple struct, C-sharp struct definitions. Um, so also nothing much nothing complex to do. The main thing in ECS programming is to implement the systems or the S in the ECS. Unlike programming with uh, traditional game objects, uh, the systems deal uh, with entire series of entities. Typically, an action will execute a for each uh, iteration uh, using something that is called an entity query and uh, you can see an example here. It is uh, built as a function call of an object called entities, that's to say collection of all the entities in the system and uh, uh, the function name is for each 
and uh, this function takes a lambda lambda function. Uh, this is a, a little bit funny C sharp syntax here, but anyway, uh, what it what it does it uh, chooses all the entities uh, that are compatible to uh, this um, signature, which uh, in this case. It's uh, every entity that contains uh, translation data component and move data component. So this is uh, basically a definition of a uh, entity archetype. Uh, so it will take uh, each entity that is compatible with this uh, archetype definition and will do some action with this in a very fast going iteration. In this case, uh, it will take uh, the Z component of the value of the translation and uh, it subtracts uh, the move component value multiplied by delta time. Uh, so this is uh, basically moving the object uh, uh, along the Z coordinate towards the camera. So that's a very simple animation. So, an action in the system is applied for each entity in a given archetype or several archetypes fed by a data stream coming from a single memory chunk or a few memory chunk in a quick burst of calculations. And this way in which um, uh, multiple entities or the data components are processed by a fast system working the for each iteration, this is exactly what makes ECS so, so fast. So what could make ECS even faster? There is a way to do it. It's called C-sharp job system. Uh, it's a special set of uh, additional classes and tools and APIs. Uh, that uh, make the organization of the entity query we saw in the previous slide uh, even, even faster, even uh, more optimized through the proper use of uh, multi-core architecture of modern processors. Uh, to make the full use of C-sharp job system, uh, there is a special new version of a compiler called Burst Compiler, a compiler that can generate these uh, very fast bursts, bursts of processing in which uh, consecutive data components are just da -da 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 very quickly. Uh, so this, this is uh, uh, the way to make ECS sometimes even 10 or 20 times faster. Uh, but uh, these uh, C-sharp job systems are outside of the scope of at least this introductory part of this lecture. And now it is, now it is time for a demo. We start from a nearly empty Unity project. It has some simple assets, uh, recreated um, script that I will show you in a moment and a completely empty scene. Uh, well, this scene uh, contains um, standard camera and directional light. Uh, in the first stage of this demo, I would like to show you a demonstration based on uh, classical game objects, so not yet on ECS solution. Uh, so let's create a 3D cube. Where is it? Here, okay. Uh, we have a 3D cube and let's add the script, the move script to this cube. So, what's in the uh, move script? It's a very simple script. It has one variable and two lines of code. Uh, the variable is called move speed and uh, this is the uh, speed of the movement in a uh, very simple animation. So the code uh, uses a translate function. It translates along the z-axis in the negative, uh, negative direction, so towards the camera, with the speed multiplied by delta time. 
And the second line is if the po z position of this transform exceeds zero, so comes into uh, to be a negative negative z coordinate, uh, the transform position will be uh, reset to original x, so previous x and y, and uh, the z coordinate will be equal to 10. So it will be just pushed back to the uh, position with z equal 10. Uh, to get it running, I just need to set up some move speed, let's say it will be 4. And uh, now I'm ready to start this simple program. And as expected, it just is uh, moving this uh, cube towards the camera. Uh, you can notice that if I move it a little bit, for example, to x position minus 1, y position maybe 1 as well. It will start from a slightly different position, okay, but it will also move this cube towards the camera. So, uh, the second attempt, I will use some of my funny assets here. For example, I have a very low poly model and this is why I'm using this model, because it's low poly. So I have a low poly sausage here. Low poly sausage with its own material to make it more sausage-like. Uh, let's reset its uh, transform. Okay, and now I will remove the old cube. We'll add the same script to the sausage this time, set up the move speed to 4, run the program, and my brilliant program is displaying a animated sausage which is quite far away, it's very very, very small just in the center of the screen, because the sausage is, is indeed quite small, and uh, the range of Z coordinates uh, uh, we are using is from 10 to 0, down to 0, so I will change the camera position. So I'm not moving the sausage, I'm moving the camera towards the sausage. And start it again. Oh, brilliant. This is what I wanted to get. Um, of course, ECS. ECS is about uh, optimizing of huge complex scenes. It's not about single, uh, single sausages. So, to show anything about the ECS system, I should show, you, for example, why not, like 20,000 sausages? Surely I will not create 20,000 sausages in this scene, I will rather create a prefab out of this sausage, So I have now a prefab, okay. Um, actually, I can now delete the original sausage and replace it with a empty object, for which I will start a new script, the new script that will instantiate 20,000 sausages. I will call this um, script bootstrap, because this is what it in fact is, and edit it in Visual Studio. Here it is. First of all, I will need a variable that I could easily access from the inspector, which will tell me how many, sorry, how many sausages I actually have. And it will be initialized as 20,000. Then, with the bootstrap, I'm not using the update function, so I will delete it to optimize. And uh, now, I'm starting with a simple iteration. 
or int i equals zero less than n i plus plus for each sausage. I will first of all create a coordinate coordinates for this sausage. New sorry. Uh, the x and y coordinates will be random. So random random range uh, let's say from uh, negative f to positive f that's the x coordinate the y coordinate will be between negative 5 and positive 5 and the z coordinate will be anything between 0 f and 10f. With these coordinates I can now instantiate the object. Instantiate using the prefab. But for this prefab I need to create a addition of the variable so that I can set up this prefab uh, from Unity Inspector. So it will be private transform. We call it original original sausage. Yeah that's a good name. Original uh, the instantiate function creates an instance of an object based on uh, the prefab. So it, um, it can take the original prefab, it will be creating a copy of this prefab, and then I have to provide the vector free position. Here it is, and I also need a quaternion. I could just provide an empty quaternion, quaternion for rotation, but just in case if I needed any real rotation. But now it's a rotation about around x, y, z, so it will be three zeros. Yeah, this should do for, for the beginning. So uh, 20,000 times I will uh, create a sausage. You can Save it now. Go back to Unity and just find out if this shortcode indeed can create 20,000 sausages. Oh, I need I need to set up the original as my sausage. So it will create 20,000 copies of my sausage prefab, run it. Okay, I have 20,000 sausages and they are actually moving quite nicely because of the prefab. This prefab already contained um, the move script with the speed of 4. Okay, uh, this actually means that all these sausages move with the same speed, which we can easily change by going back to the script and adding one more line here, just to tell that uh, t dot move speed. Move speed is um, uh, variable uh, defining this speed of the movement, but this variable is a part, is a, a member of the component move, the move component. So I cannot access it directly, I have to use the get component function, get component of the type move, empty brackets, and now I can access the move 
speed and the smooth speed will be equal to random range between 1f and 504f. Save. Go back to Unity. One moment, it's now building and start. Sorry, start. And this is really great. I have 20,000 sausages. And if I click at the start, okay. A frame, frame rate is not ideal, it's also not a very powerful computer because of the coronavirus outbreak. I, I cannot attend the uni, so it's my home computer, but it has quite a nice uh, i, i4 or i5 uh, processor, and uh, NVIDIA, oh, I will not reveal all the technical details, it's not so good as um, uh, GTX 1080 that we have at the uni, but also not very bad. Uh, so we have the 17, 18 FPS. Okay, but let's stop it. And uh, I have this counter here. Let's change it to maybe 100,000 sausages. 100,000 sausages flying across the screen. Run the program. Take some time to instantiate. Oh, it's so bad now, so bad. Uh, the frame rate is 3.5k. So it's 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 nothing really good. Um, one more test. I will run this program once again with 70,000 of sausages because. I know, because I, I, I ran this uh, demo earlier, uh, with 70,000 sausages in the ECS mode, you can get quite a nice animation. But here, in, with game objects, it is, well, below 5 PS. Unacceptable. So, to improve the efficiency of this program, we will switch it to ECS, Entity Component System. First thing, you have to ensure that you have uh, the right packages installed. So, oops, sorry, this is the Package Manager. And in this Package Manager, you first of all have to check Hybrid Render. Hybrid Render is one of the packages uh, that we are going to use to create our uh, ECS system. This Hybrid Render is probably the only thing that you have to install. I have already done it, so I don't have to install it again. When you install Hybrid Render, it should automatically install another important package entities. Um, it's uh, dependent on, on the entities, so entities should um, um, install automatically, but it's uh, worth of to, to double check if you have entities. Uh, there is also another, uh, another package that uh, you may or may have not installed. It. This is mathematics. Okay, so we are using mathematics, hybrid renderer, and entities. These are three packages. Okay, now the task for us is to decompose our program to entities, components, and systems. Uh, but we will start from the bootstrap. Bootstrap, okay. And in this bootstrap, uh, we already have a number of um, entities to create. 
you don't need a prefab because ECS is not based on uh, game objects and uh, of course all this code is not needed at all. Um, so this bootstrap will be needed to create the entities and uh, perhaps you guess that one entity is one sausage so we eventually will want to create 20,000 entities but let's start with just one okay so let's start with just one entity first thing that we have to do is to create an entity manager entity and of course it's not visible because we definitely need to use unity entities. Okay, so now it should show me quite quickly entity manager. Let's call it entity manager equals. It's not just a new, we need to use another special uh, thing in ECS which is called weld sorry equals weld weld is an object that uh, manages the entire ECS application and we will ask the world to provide us with so we don't create a new manager we just ask for the active entity manager that's the first step the second step, if you remember our slides at the beginning of this session, um, entities are covered in archetypes. Archetype defines a composition of uh, data components. So the next step will be to create entity archetype as uh, variable equals and to create this we will ask the entity entity manager to create archetype and the archetype is as you probably remember defined by a set of uh, data components so we will add a few data components so you may remember from our slides presentation that um, there is a number of standard data components in the system like translation, rotation, local, weld, and uh, render, render mesh actually. And yes, exactly the same set of uh, components we want to create right now. So the first is translation. So with a few lines of code and using declarations more, we eventually have the entity archetype ready to use. Once we have the entity archetype, we will once again use the entity manager, this time to create a new entity based on the entity archetype. The next step is to set up the internal data of each data component. We use the entity manager set component data function to create a new translation component. This is a standard component defined by Unity, so we can check its actual composition. As you can see, it contains one variable of the float free data type, adequately named value. Float free data type is defined in the Unity package mathematics. We will define the float free value of the translation data component in a very similar way to what we did with the game object style bootstrap. The x will be set to the random range uh, between uh, negative 8 and positive 8, the y between negative 5 and positive 5, and the z between 0 and 10. The 
the next data component will be the rotation. For this one, we will use a serialized variable, also rotation. Two more components, scale and uh, the render mesh, which is a bit more interesting as it contains two variables, uh, the mesh and the material, both essential for the rendering of our sausage entity. Of course, uh, we have also added a few public variables, so first of all mesh and material, and also the scale. Back to Unity, so save the file and go back to Unity, just a moment. So we have these uh, new variables here in the bootstrap script. Uh, the first one is the mesh. Um, uh, it's obviously not working because Sausage is a prefab, we won't actually need it, so it can be deleted. Um, but I can click here and choose the Sausage from the list of available meshes. Uh, for the material, I will actually go to our asset and take the real material. Um, at this moment, uh, the first entity is ready to run. So start and it is actually can I see any sausage here? No. No. Actually quite difficult to spot anything. But hey, we have a scale property here. Let's make the sausage 10 times bigger and restart the program. It's still invisible, but it can be sideways somewhere. So I will try several times. Oh, I can see a part of the sausage, maybe. Yes, we have the sausage quite clearly visible right now. I will also start um, analysis entity debugger, so you can see that we indeed have entity in the system, and when it is highlighted, I also have the inspector window, from which we can, for example, find out that the translation uh, value for the sausage is minus seven zero nine. Okay, so it's quite far away. Okay. The next step must be to create uh, multiple sausages, like 20,000 perhaps. To do this, let's go back to Visual Studio. We have a variable uh, which, uh, uh, which is effectively a counter of our sausages. So now, instead of creating just one entity, first of all, let's create a native array, native array of entities the size of the array has been set to n and a simple temp allocator has been used entity managers create entity function will be now used to create the entire array of entities just by adding an additional parameter. And finally, we create a for each loop to iterate through the entire array and to initialize each entity in it. The final step will be to dispose of the entity array, which is no longer required. As you can see, the entire initialization of our 
data components is now in one big for each iteration. You can now save this solution and switch switch to Unity. Press play. It takes some time to initialize all the entities. And oops, sorry, uh, these sausages are way too large, so let's change the scaling to 1 and restart the program. Here it is, 20,000 flying sausages uh, with uh, quite a good FPS of 80. The next step is to animate our sausages. We'll do it by creating a custom data component to store the speed of movement and a brand new system to process the movement. So far we have only used Unity predefined data components, but it is now time to create our very own one. Let's exit from the play mode. I remove the old move script that will be no longer required and create a new one, a new C sharp script entitled move component. By default, Unity scripts inherit after mono behavior. This is not what we want. So, first thing, I will add using Unity entities. Then, let's remove the start and update functions that will be not required. Um, Data components must be struct, struct, not classes. So we go struct and of course not a mono behavior, but a special base class which is called i component data. I component data. And it's nearly ready. The only thing that we need is to define the actual data value of this uh, data component, which will be public float value. This is all. This is a, a full ready to use ECS component. Now we will switch back to Bootstrap and add a short code to actually include our data component firstly in the archetype so we will add type of move component and we need a comma here copy this name and now a new initialization entity manager dot set component data entity new name of our entity which is move component basis value equals will be a range of um, random values, so unity engine dot random dot range from 1f to 4f. Done! We have created the data component and we have initialized this data component in the bootstrap script. Don't forget to save it. Go back to Unity. Of course, adding and initializing a new data component doesn't change anything in the program. Why? Because we need one more item, 
the move system. So stop the program, create a new script, say move system, double As previously in um, a data component, I will add using Unity entities and additionally using Unity transforms. Now, we of course don't want the mono behavior, we want a component system and uh, we will not use start and update functions uh, now the system displays an error this error is says that move system does not implement inherited abstract member component system on update show potential fixes so let's show the, lo look at this uh, fixes implement abstract class click well this is an equivalent of the update function of game objects uh, for component systems and this is exactly the time to use the entity query which we have discussed in the beginning of this lecture session um, so the uh, this function now should deal with entire series of entities and uh, run an action for each entity using this entity query. So I will actually copy this section and uh, we don't want this front thing so yeah that's uh, nearly this. So entities is a set of all the entities in the program. For each entity which has a translation and our new move component, we will change the Z component of the translation value by our move component value multiply, might, multiplied by the delta time. And I will add just a single additional line of code which is supposed to control the Z component of the translation value and when it exceeds 0 to move it back to 10. The move system is now ready to use. Let's save it and click to go back to Unity. Well, and uh, click play. I think that uh, may actually come as a surprise that the system is working. The ECS system is working, it's uh, animating our sausages. Uh, we are now looking at uh, 40, no, 70,000 flying self, uh, sausages at uh, 16. FPS and our move system that we have just created uh, just started to work. So uh, unlike very much unlike uh, traditional scripts in Unity, uh, we didn't have to attach it to any other object. Uh, we didn't need to register our system in any way. Uh, ECS systems actually work automatically uh, just by using uh, the component system or a similar class as the base class for the system ensures, guarantees actually, that uh, this ECS system will be activated by the system and will just start its action of uh, the getting data from input streams and doing something with this data. So this is 70,000 sausages displayed with uh, 16 FPS um, with uh, game object based system without ECS 
are the frame rate for the same amount, for, for the same number of sausages, was about 5 PS. Let's test this solution a bit. Let's change to 100,000. One hundred thousand sausages and still over ten frames per second. It's not a uh, very good quality, but um, with uh, game objects it was like three point five. And um, to actually have a reasonable frame rate of eighteen, in the case of game objects, uh, we had to decrease the number of objects on the screen to 20,000. So let's make this test. 20,000 sausages. And it's... 55 frames per second. Absolutely smoothly. Great result with 20,000 uh, 20, uh, sausages. It's uh, really great. Now, getting back to our slides, um, we have considered what can be made to get ECS even faster, and one way of doing this was the C-sharp job system. Details of implementation of a job system are beyond the scope of this lecture session, but I have implemented it. It's right now here. Configured for 70,000 sausages, uh, which we previously had with in 5 FPS for the game object system and 16 FPS for uh, ECS, but without the job system. 16 frames per second, so let's have a look what we can get here. This will be the ECS with the job system. It needs... Wow, it's 70... over 70 frames per second. 70,000 sausages at more than 70 frames per second. So, I feel brave enough to go to 100,000 sausages. And the result is... Here is 100,000 flying sausages with over 50 frames per second. Let's go even higher. 4,100... Uh, sorry, like 400,000. Not so great, but it's about 16 frames per second. Maybe we should try 1 million flying sausages. Well, the frame rate is not very impressive, but wait a moment, it's a million sausages. Let's try to make them a little bit smaller, rescale them to 0 0.2 and restart. And here it is, one million sausages. Let's change the position of the camera a bit. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, one million flying sausages. Instead of a conclusion, here is the statistics of the FPS results we got 
in various techniques. And uh, as a special Corona Files bonus material, 70,000 flying toilet paper rolls. These 50,000 buoyed fishes come from Unity own official ECS demo. You can find links to the project I presented as well as to the Unity demo you are watching right now below the video. Thank you.